Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, I'm sitting here and I'm waiting for a version 0.16 of Kerbal Space Program. But in the meantime, I thought I'd make a little video um, about another alternative or another thing you might want to play in the meantime if you're into the whole rocket science thing. Now, the developers have talked long term about a campaign mode with uh, limited resources and costs and R&D. And uh, to get a good idea of what that might be like, you could go out and look at a game from the early 90s called Buzz Aldrin's Race Into Space. Now, this was originally based on a board game called Liftoff that was released in 1989, and that had four players competing to reach the moon first. The computer version to, uh, wasn't released until 1993, and uh, for technical reasons, they reduced it to two players with uh, the computer being able to play the other one. So that would be, you know, Russian versus uh, US space interests. There was a CD-ROM version released in 1994, which had whole bunch of extra things such as much better video. I mean, the idea is simple. You are the manager of the space program and your ultimate aim is to get to the moon. Now, you start out by buying rocket equipment and then setting scientists on to uh, research it and increase its safety over time. Now, your safety factor is the most important thing in the game. Um, every mission basically has a whole bunch of maneuvers where they roll against your percentage safety factor. And uh, if it comes out below it, things can go wrong. And if things come out really bad, you can lose the entire mission. Now, despite the fact that this game originally came on floppy disk, there are actually movies showing the launches in every case. Of course, they're postage stamp size movies that run at about three frames per second. But, uh, you know, that was quite an innovation for a 1993 floppy disk game. Now, success is good. It helps the, the governments like you. It means they give you more money, and it also helps you uh, step up to further and larger missions. Um, you can skip certain missions, but uh, you then have a safety penalty. You know, and that's really where the strategy comes in. You can choose not to build uh, the whole Apollo program. Instead, you could take the Gemini program, strap more boosters on it, put a an extra kicker on there to push it into lunar transfer orbit and try landing that. But uh, the chance of success on that is possibly lower. Alternatively, you can try to build the single big rocket without performing a moon orbit rendezvous. And, you know, that saves you having to develop docking in space and, and all sorts of other things. But uh, instead means you're spending a whole lot of money on a big, huge rocket. So there is some built-in replay value as you attempt to reach the moon via techniques that NASA never attempted. In addition to managing the hardware, you also have to manage the crews. Um, the crews come with various skill levels and some guys like each other and some of them don't. The crew management was apparently one thing which was added from the board game, although there was a number of things from the board game that were cut. Also, a year later, they uh, repackaged the game with in a CD-ROM version, which added a whole bunch of new movies, such as uh, newscasters reading the news of your various success and failures. And of course, they made the, the graphics and the videos of the launches a whole lot better. Now, originally, the game was released by Interplay, but around the mid-90s, the contract expired and the rights reverted to the developers. That's uh, Fritz Brunner and Michael McCarty. And they have gone on the record as saying it's okay for people to download and share the game. But better still, in 2005, the source code was released. And since then, a group of avid fans have maintained a SourceForge project, which has uh, reached the 1.0 version mark. They've uh, fixed a number of bugs, improved a number of features, but they've kept the original graphics lar in large part. So that is, you know, you can go and download that and that's probably the best version to get. It still looks like a 1994 era IBM PC game. The only thing that's really missing from the, the remake is Buzz Aldrin. He is no longer the official face of the game. He wasn't an advisor. Uh, the contract expired with him, essentially. So it's just called Race Into Space. Uh, go to raceintospace.org to uh, download it. Also, since this was 1994, this was the days before in-game tutorials became the norm. And the game came with a huge manual to explain everything. Uh, you can still download those from a couple of websites, again, legally. Around the same time, Fritz Broner actually published a 350-page book uh, with under Silicon Valley Publishing, which uh, explained the game and a whole lot of other historical information. But I think for legal reasons, the copyrights are still with the publisher, so that can't be downloaded for free. The game is rather unforgiving, and when you're playing against the CPU, it does cheat. 
But don't get discouraged. When you're faced with adversity, ask yourself, what would Jebediah Kerman do? I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.